Hey everyone, Rachel here from Curly Quilts, back with another beginning sewing video. Today we're going to talk about one of the most important parts um, that creates successful sewing, and that is your sewing needle. Specifically, we are going to be talking about sewing machine needles, because that's what most people use. And to be honest, I don't do a whole lot of hand sewing myself, uh, so I don't really know the specifics of those. But I do know a lot about regular sewing machine needles. So today we're going to talk about why it's important to change your needle, why it's important to use a specific type of needle, and what types of needles can you use in certain types of sewing machines. So for a quick little overview, I want to talk about the difference between a regular sewing machine needle and what a hand sewing needle looks like. Uh, most people, obvious, I think they know the difference once they see the needles, but just in case you don't, a hand sewing needle looks something like this. So you're going to see it has a point on one end, and then the eye, the hole that the thread goes through, is on the other end. Because the way that hand sewing works is that you only have one piece of thread, and it goes in and out, in and out of the fabric. And so you use the point to lead to lead the thread in the back through your fabric up and down and things of that nature. Um, so if you have a needle with a point on one end and an eye on the other, that is just a regular old um, hand sewing needle. So you want to make sure you don't use that for your sewing machine. Okay, so to get into the specifics of regular sewing machine needles, we need to understand um, how what a sewing machine needle looks like. So it's definitely going to look a lot different from a hand sewing needle. Uh, here we go. You can see there's a big fat, fat end. Um, a lot of them for household machines are going to have a flat side and a rounded side. And then the eye of the needle is actually where the point is. And that's because in a sewing machine, you have your top thread and your bobbin thread. And the needle, instead of pulling the thread through, what it does is it actually creates, it creates the stitch with the two threads. So the needle is almost like your hook. If you do crochet or knitting, the needle is basically like your hook. It brings the top thread down, hooks onto the bottom thread, and creates a loop within your fabric. I have this really great pocket guide. This is made by Schmetz and I'm sure other brands of needles out there also create something similar. Um, and it has this really great page that talks about the needle anatomy. So you're going to see here we have the tip, the point, the eye. Something else that's really important is the scarf, which is the indentation on the back. That's basically what helps bring the bobbin thread up. And then here you can see on this page, they talk about the differences in these different types of needles. So depending on what you're sewing on, what type of fabric you're sewing on, what kind of thread you're using, it's really important to use a different type of needle because each needle has a different anatomy. And so then I'm going to show you guys some different types of needles that I have. I mostly use Schmetz. It's a household needle. You can use it in most models and brands of sewing machines. I use Schmetz in my Janome sewing machine. You can use them in a Bernina, a Baby Lock, Brother, Viking, Foff. I even use them on my vintage Singer sometimes when I run out of Singer needles. And you can see I have an embroidery needle, so that's for machine embroidery. You have Universal, there's another embroidery. There's a metallic needle, that's for metallic threads. There's a Microtex needle, which is also known as a sharp needle. There's quilting needles, top stitch needles. There are also other types of needles like denim, stretch, and jersey needles. I don't have any of those because I don't do a whole lot of garment sewing. And so like this picture here in this book shows us, it's important to use a specific type of needle for a specific type of fabric and a specific technique because of the shape of things like the scarf, the eye, and especially the tip. So for example, um, when we're working with cotton fabrics, polyesters, 
silky fabrics. If you're going to be doing any sort of um, vinyl work, the most the needle you're most likely going to use is the Microtex Sharp Needle. It has to do with the shape of the point and the way that it penetrates through those different types of fabrics. That's different from, say, a quilting needle because, as you can imagine, when you're doing quilting through all three layers of mostly cotton fabrics, that's generally what most quilters use, you need a different shape and style of point to go through all those different layers. And because cotton is woven, it's going to react differently than, say, a polyester or maybe a silky fabric would. So I'm just going to pull these out here. Make sure you can see it. You're also going to notice with Schmetz, they have different colors on the needles themselves. Sorry, I'm just making sure you guys can see. There's the scarf back there. That was the Microtex Sharp Needle. Like again, Schmetz color codes theirs. And then this is the quilting needle. It's, I mean, a pretty minute difference. It's hard to, it's, you know, it's difficult to see what the differences are. But there is a difference, and it does make a difference. A lot of people, with those, when they go to the sewing supply store, they go, oh, I'm just doing basic sewing. Right? Oh, I'm just doing basic sewing. I don't do anything fancy. I'm not a quilter. All I do is basic sewing, right? The thing is, there is no such thing as basic sewing. Not anymore. Maybe, you know, in 1956 when my Singer machine was produced, there was some basic sewing. And so you did have some more standardized, basic needles, right? They didn't have these things like Microtex or quilting needles because there wasn't a need for them yet. Um, there wasn't all, there wasn't a whole ton of different synthetic fibers out there. You know, polyester, I think, was just coming on the scene at this time. You know, we didn't have anything like spandex or, you know, cotton poly blends and things like that. So a basic needle was all anybody needed. A basic needle is, ah, I just dropped it, hold on, is also known as nowadays a universal needle. And what a universal needle is, I'll actually show you guys this picture again, is it's actually an in-between, a sharp, and a ballpoint needle. So in, in today's sewing world, for the most part, a universal needle is never the right needle. Okay, it's kind of like your emergency needle. I like to think of universal needles as uh, my as your spare tire, right? You should always have a pack on hand just in case. Um, you run out of your other needles and you need to, you know, sew a seam really quick. You know, you need to hem some pants really quick. A universal needle will do in the, tr in the, in the trick, you know, if you need it really quickly. But it's never the right type of needle because, again, it's an in-between needle. It's never... It, it'll cause a lot of tension issues for most people. So I think it's important to have a basic universal needle in hand. As you can see, I have a really big one. I had bought this pack when I first started sewing, and I didn't understand um, needles or needle sizes, and that's something we'll get into uh, really quick as well. So there's a universal needle, that's an in-between. A metallic needle is for when you're working with metallic threads. I love to use metallic threads. You can use metallic threads when you're doing machine embroidery, for decorative stitching, or for actually for free motion quilting as well. And I love to use uh, metallic threads for free motion quilting, especially smaller, more decorative uh, quilts that are going to hang on the wall. And especially at Christmas time, um, it's really nice to use metallic threads for Christmas stockings. And the big difference with the metallic threads, I don't know if you guys can notice right here on the eye, is much larger. And that's to help prevent the shredding of metallic threads because they're the way that they're designed, they, they shred very easily, they break very easily. And so having a larger eye will help prevent that. Um, we already kind of talked about the Microtex needle. That's a sharp needle. This would, I would say, Microtex is really the new universal. This is more of your basic needle to go to nowadays because it covers so many different types of fabrics, uh, cottons, polyesters, uh, coated materials, you know, flannel, uh, vinyl, if you're going to be doing some work with vinyl, your Microtex Sharp Needle is pretty much your go-to um, for most of that basic kind of sewing. 
um, embroidery needles, machine, that's for machine embroidery. Um, these are designed to, since um, in machine embroidery, the needle is moving up and down very fast and it's going through, you know, all the different threads and the different layers and things like that. An embroidery needle is designed to uh, not heat up quite as quickly. It's designed to help prevent, you know, friction on the thread. And then as you can see here on, on this pack of needles, it says chrome. That means there's a chrome finish to this needle, which um, also helps in the needle not heating up quite as quickly, which will help prevent your thread from breaking and helps your needle stay sharper longer as well. Uh, we also have some quilting needles. You can also use quilting needles when you're piecing your quilt tops. But this is really, I love quilting needles for going through all three layers of a quilt when you're doing your quilt binding. Or if you're working on a bag. If you're doing bag making with like cottons and, and polyesters and there's multiple layers, this is a really great, great needle to, to use for those thicker layers, especially multiple layers of cotton. Um, if you're going to be doing a rag quilt with flannel, I highly recommend a quilting needle. Next, we have a top stitch needle. This is for when you're working with really thick decorative threads. And either you're doing, sometimes when you're doing quilting, you use the top stitch needle um, with the thick decorative threads. It's also really good if you're doing like top stitching on a garment, top stitching on a, you know, a zipper bag or something like that. Uh, this is nice when you're doing those really thick threads um, and you want to have that decorative touch. The top stitch needle is really good for that. Okay, and as you guys are going to notice here, I do have another brand of needle. This is a sing Singer Needle Package. This was in with my machine, my, my 301A. I'll pay it up really quick for you. There's my 1956 301A. And this pack of needles was in with all the different supplies and notions. So I don't know that this package is from 1956, um, but it's definitely an older package, which I, I think is really cool. And so it's empty. I just kept it because I think it's really, you know, kind of cute to have around. But um, Singer needles are one of the few needles that you cannot use in any other brand of machine. Uh, they tend to be a little bit longer than the Schmetz. Um, and so you don't want to use the Singer needle on a different brand of machine. Say, for instance, my Janome. I would never use a Singer needle in my Janome because what's going to happen is because of the length of it and the way that it sits in the machine, when it comes down to the bobbin area, it'll, it might potentially hit my bobbin hook and cause, it might throw your timing out. Um, the timing is important because, again, the sewing machine has the needle come down at a certain point the bottom thread catches at a certain point and then it pulls up at a certain point. And so the timing keeps the, all that, that sequence in check. And if you have the wrong type of needle in your machine, like a Singer needle in your Baby Lock machine, a Singer needle in your Janome machine, it could potentially knock the timing out and cause a lot of issues later on down the road with your machine. So unless your book says specifically... Um, that you can use a certain type of needle like so here's the instruction manual for my singer machine it says ne singer needles should be used in singer machines and then it, it has like a little side note here which i think needles and containers marked for singer machines are not singer made needles and so they say specifically especially on more of the vintage machines pretty much you know anything older than the 1970s uh, mechanical style singer machines they're generally going to be using those singer brand uh, needles um, a lot of newer singer machines too that you might get at like Joann's or something like that will recommend a singer needle so just make sure you reference your instruction manual for your sewing machine but do know that Schmetz needles do tend to be universal to all brands um, you really just want to keep an eye out on it as it's going down if you notice that when you turn your hand wheel on your machine with a needle you feel something hit or maybe it's not picking up the thread right, perhaps that brand of needle that you're using is not correct. Okay, so we talked about a couple of different brands of needles out there. Uh, we also talked about the types of needles. I also Now I wanna go over the different sizes. Um, so you're gonna see here, here's a 7511, an 8012. Now all the different types of needles come in different sizes, okay? 
116, 110, 18. You're going to notice that each size needle has two different numbers corresponding to it. That's because they correspond to European and American measurements. I forget which is which. I'm going to guess the 110, the 90, the 80, the 75 has to do with millimeters. Um, so I'm going to guess that's metric. And then, of course, in America, 11, 12, 14, 16, 18. That kind of sounds really American, especially as a woman. Um, I know jean sizes are like 8, 10, 12, 14. So that's going to be my best guess on that for you. And so for needles, the bigger the number, the bigger the needle. Usually the bigger the eye, the bigger the shaft itself. So if we compare our 110 universal, let me pop this baby out of here for you, compared to a 7511 embroidery, you're going to notice right away a huge a size difference in the needles themselves. Let's see, so the little pink, this one's the 75, and that's the 11018. The eye is much bigger on the bigger number. The shaft itself is a little bit fatter as well. Now, the reason why there are different sizes um, is for the different sizes of threads. And that's going to be a whole other video. I'm going to talk about thread, the way the thread that works, because in thread, it's the complete opposite. So just to kind of give you an idea, the thinner thread you have, the smaller needle you want to use. So if you have a very, very, very fine, thin thread on the top and the bottom, and you're working through like a silk or a very thin fabric, you need to use a smaller needle. If you're using a really thick, heavyweight thread, and you're going through multiple layers of fabric, you're going to need a bigger needle, right? That makes sense. If our thread is thicker, then I'm going to need a bigger eye for the thread to go through. And then if I'm going through multiple layers of fabric, I'm going to want a beefier needle to get through all those different layers of fabric. So it's really important when you're buying thread at the store to look at the weight of it. And then a lot of times, a lot of different brands of thread will have a chart that tells you what size needle you should use for what thickness of thread. Um, in particular, Mettler, uh, they're not a sponsor or anything. I just, I love their thread. Anytime I go buy their thread too, um, they always have a chart on the thread stands that talks about the weight of the thread, whether it's lightweight, medium, heavy duty. And then it'll also give you a suggestion on what size needle you should be using. Another brand that does that really well is Wonderfill. Wonderfill has some really nice um, tutorials online and some quick videos on YouTube. And they always talk about, you know, depending on the thickness of thread you're using, what size needle you should be using. Now, the last point I want to get to about needles is needles never go bad, right? Thread will eventually start to deteriorate. Needles... Um, new in a package will never just go dull. Now, if, when you're sewing with a needle, it will get dull. And just like a chef, you know, with really nice knives, a chef always has to sharpen his knife before he uses it, right? On your car, if you drive on your tires for a really long time, they're going to get bald. And so you have to change your tires frequently. Just like with the tires on your car, just like a chef with his knives, you need to change your needle. Do not be afraid to change your needle. You should be changing your needle depending on whether it's a chrome finish or not. I would say at least, I mean, 15 hours might even be pushing it. I would say between 10 to 15 hours. If you have a chrome finish or titanium finish needle, 15 hours would probably be the minimum. If it's just a regular old you know, no finish needle, you're going to be looking at about 10 to 12 hours of sewing. Now, I work with people, The my my 9 to 5 job, you know, I work with sewers. I see look at their sewing machines, help them determine problems with them. And 9 times out of 10, the reason why their stitching is looking really poor or their thread's not picking up from the bobbin is because they haven't changed their needle in like 10 years. And to me, that's a little bit crazy. Um... You know, some people will give the excuse, you know, money is a problem, this and that. The thing is, if you're getting into sewing as a hobby, 
and you can't afford a $5 pack of needles, you might need to pick a different hobby. I, I'm not trying to, you know, come down on anybody, uh, you know, for being financially tight. I get it. But you need to budget needles. You need to budget needles. If you have enough money to buy yards and yards of fabric, you should have enough money to buy a new pack of needles for the different types of projects that you're doing. Your needle is really important. You know, without a good sharp needle, you're not going to be able to penetrate fabric very well. You're not going to be able to pick up the thread very well. The thread's going to shred on you. You're going to have tension issues. You're not going to have a balanced stitch. So whatever you do... Um, you know, if you're sewing along and you notice that you're having issues with your your stitching, the first thing you should do is change your needle. Especially if someone were to ask you, when's the last time you changed your needle? And you go, uh, I, I don't even know. That's, that's a sign right there that you should probably be changing your needle, okay? Like I said, needles don't go bad. So if there's a sale going on at your local sewing shop, if you see a really good deal online, go ahead and stock up on needles. Uh, your most common sizes that you're going to use the most are going to be an 8012 and a 9014. You may occasionally need a 116 if you're going to get into the thicker decorative threads. And if you do machine embroidery, you're definitely going to want to have a 7511. But again, 8012s, 9014s, these are the two most common ones that I use personally. <coughs> I use the Microtex 8012 for, you know, basic sewing. And then, for the most part, for me, I'm a quilter, so I generally use the 9014 quilting needles for the most part um, with the thread that I use. All right, guys, so that's all the information I have for you today about sewing machine needles. Um, so make sure you pull out your instruction manual, uh, read about what kinds of needles your instruction manual recommends. And remember, don't be afraid to change your needle, especially if you're having any sort of tension issues or anything like that. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about thread and the differences in thread and things like that. So I hope, hope this was really helpful for you. I hope you learned something new and I hope you guys have a great day.